Okay, we're in section 27, and this is the homework. We're going to go through the homework. Um, again, in the blue area, you'll see the work and you'll see an answer. If you have any questions or concern about what's being presented to you, I do want to encourage you to come by during office hours and we'll go through it with you. All right. So um, uh, you may want to, you know, certainly use technology or take the hints or read through what I'm doing over here, but I'm just going to go through this now. I'll go to the whiteboard. All right. So let me go to the whiteboard and I got to do, uh, do a new share with you. And we're on the homework now. All right, so we're gonna do this problem over here. And they say from zero to five. And the way I'm gonna do this over here is, I got kind of, you know, get a visual feel for what's happening before I write my formula down. And um, I don't know, let me draw a little picture over for you. And X and Y, right? So when uh, we're starting at zero, we get, you know, the, when t is zero, we get the point, what point will we get? We would get eight, nine, right? And then when t is five, what point will we get over there? Well, 15, let's see, 15, right? 15 plus eight, 23. And then when it's five, you get nine plus 10, which is 19, right? And you know the distance between those two points Again, I'm just thinking through the problem. The distance between those two points would be what? Let's see, change in x's. Let's see, 23 minus 8. Better make any mistakes, right? That's 15, isn't it? So 15 squared plus 19 minus 9, that would be 10 squared, right? And that's 225 plus 100, which is 325. And let's see, 25 goes into 325, right? Let's see, 4, 12, 13 times, right? So 5 root 13, all right? That's the straight line distance between those. I, I also want to encourage you, you may want to think about what the curve is. And it really isn't that bad. You know, x equals, I'm going to write this down as 8 plus 3t. And y is equal to 9 plus 2t. I'm going to eliminate this by multiplying the top by two and the bottom by minus three. And what do you have here? Two X equals 16 plus six T and you get minus three Y minus 27 minus six T. If you add these two equations together, what do you get? You get two X minus three Y equals, well, the T's disappear, which is great news. And then you get minus 11, right? I have this W line. So this will be the distance between those two points. But you know what? Let, let's say that's just too much work, all that, you know, figuring out it's a line and putting the points down there and all that arithmetic. So what I'd like to do is uh, I'd like to go through the formula. All right. So I'm going to write this over here. And I'm going to say, you know, that, uh, that this XT business is equal to 8 plus 3T. I'm going to use calc now. I'm hoping to get this answer over here, by the way. And x prime is going to equal 8. All right. And let's put y down now. And y is a function of t. And it's going to be 9 plus 2t. And y prime, I'm not going to put the t there. The y prime is just going to be 2. So what do I have to do? Let's write the formula down. The formula is going to be, let's see, 8 squared, right, 64, plus 2 squared, which is 4. And then, let's see, I'm going to do dt, and the t is going to be between 0 and 5. Whoa. Let's take a look at this. Root 68. T, 0 to 5. I think I made a mistake somewhere. Next page, see what happened. Now I know what happened. I wrote the wrong thing down. Let me do that because it's not working out. I was expecting to get 5 root 13. 
So let me, let me, I made a mistake. And I want to point out where the mistake is. And I, I, I you know, it's easy to blame things on, on being tired, but it, it's not good to be tired. When you do it homework, you can be tired though. On exams, don't do this. Sorry about that. So let's write this down. So what are we going to get over here? Uh, the root of x prime squared, which is nine plus the, uh, the, the two squared is four, dt, and the t's are going from zero to five. So it's going to be root 13 t, zero to five, which is going to give you uh, root 13 times five or five root 13s. All right, we got that. We're doing good. All right, let's go to the next page. And again, the work is on there. Next page here, it's right over here. We did that. All right, so this one over here. Again, I, I'm not going to say you can't draw a picture of this thing over here. You know, maybe I should talk about the picture of this thing over here. And the way I would do it, I, was, I would simply say, you know, x is equal to six sine 5t and y is equal to six cosine 5t. And I'd probably like, you know, square both sides. This is 36 sine squared 5t. And this is going to be y squared, right? And that's going to be 36 cosine squared 5t. So x squared plus y squared would equal 36 sine squared 5t plus 36 cosine squared 5t. By the way, I'm not recommending doing this. I'm just saying it can be done. So this is giving me x squared plus y squared. Well, if you factor out 36, you would get 36 and then a Pythagorean identity, sine squared 5t plus cosine squared 5t, which is one. Now, what do I know about this thing over here? This is a circle like this. That's what there's a circle. Now, if I thought about it, you know, in the circumference of a circle, this is a, this is a radius of six, by the way, is two pi r, right? So what's cover that circle? Well, if you thought about it, it's, you know, it's just two pi r. And if r is six, it would be 12. Hope you can agree with that, that the circumference around that circle is 12. But you know, I, I got a problem over here. And I'll tell you what it is, although the circumference of that circle is 12, I'm wondering what this thing is saying to do. It's saying that you're kind of, you know, moving around, you know, starting at zero and then going to pi. Well, I hope you realize that it, it, I'm sorry, that's pi over here. If you did that, well, then the question is how many times you go around? It's more than once at five pi there. So what, once around, you, you would need a two pi, right? To get once around. So that's really two and a half times around. And what's two and a half times 12? 24 and 6, 30. So you could think through this and say, oh yeah, it's 30 pi. But I, answer that, I, I don't know if that's such a good idea. So, cause I could get confused thinking too. So what I wanna do is just go, you know, a formula we gave you. And let's write this down. So I'm gonna write X down is six sine 5t. I'm gonna write down X prime. That's gonna be 30 cosine 5t. I'm gonna write Y down as six cosine 5t. Y prime is gonna be minus 30 sine 5t. Now what I got to do, I put my formula down, I'll put it over here for you. I got a root and this is going to be, I'm, I'm squaring this, which is 30 squared times cosine squared 5t plus, I'm going to square this guy now, which is 30 squared sine squared 5t dt and where are we going through? We're going between, I got to remind myself, zero and pi. I got to do my integrations. What do you got over here? Zero to pi. Well, 30 squared comes out. And again, you're left with a Pythagorean identity. So it's going to be 30 
squared times one, the square root of 30 squared is 30, dt. Let's do this, 30t, zero to pi. So what do you get? 30 pi, as we said it would be. Let's go back over here to k, and I'm seeing it over there. Again, you know, zero to pi would be two and a half times around this, once, twice, and then a half time. So it would be two and a half times 12 pi would be 30 pi, all right? Okay, this one over here, much more complicated. And the reason I, the graphing this out, I, I just don't think it's gonna be productive. All right, so what I'm gonna do over here is I'm gonna write X is a function of theta. I'm gonna write down X prime. I want to make sure I did that right. And let's take a look. Yeah, did that good. So this is going to be, turns out pretty simple, right? That's just theta sine theta. All right, let me write down my y now. And we have a key to look at. We'll look at the key later. And what's y prime going to be equal to? Minus sine theta plus sine theta plus theta cosine theta. And this one works out pretty nicely too. It's going to be theta cosine theta. What am I going to do? I'm going to square those guys and add them together. It's going to be theta squared sine squared theta plus theta squared cosine theta. Cosine squared theta. D theta. And what's my theta going between uh, zero and four? Again, don't, don't despair. It's going to work out pretty nicely. I do want to point out theta is a positive number between zero and four. Make it a little bit easier for me to deal with the problem, by the way. So zero to four. And another Pythagorean identity, theta squared comes out. You left off with sine squared theta plus cosine squared, which one, the square root of theta squared is actually the absolute value of theta. But between zero and four, it's just simply theta d theta, what's it going to give me? Theta squared over two, limits integration zero to four, which can be 16 over two, which is eight. Let's take a look at the k. And again, when I say look at the k, it, you know, so you, you might be concerned that when you're doing something, you're getting a wrong answer, but at least you're agreeing with me. I'm not sure if that's good enough for you. All right, so find the length of the path over which the given, into, oh boy, this looks really crazy, all right? So um, they give me a hint though. You see that? Well, that's nice. Well, that's gonna help me. So let's take a look. And I'm gonna do this and let's take a look. All right. So I guess I gotta write X down, right? I'm gonna expand it. Remember, if you get stuck, just move on. Oh, I got to do x prime squared, right? I can do y prime squared. And let's see what we get over there. If I'm going to square that, I will get 64. Stop me if I go too fast. You can always pause the tape. That's what I mean by that. That'd be one minus cosine theta. So it's going to be one minus two cosine theta plus 
cosine squared theta. Well, I got to add those two guys together. I was going to a root problem. This is where it might get really tough. But what I notice, I got 64. And then I get uh, minus 128 cosine theta. And then I would get, you know, 64 cosine squared plus 64 sine squared, which is 64. And then I'll put my d theta over here. And my thetas are going between 0 and 2 pi. All right, I, I have more troubles, right? Let's put this down, 0, 2 pi. And this would be the root of 128 minus 128 cosine theta, d theta. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to factor it, and that's the root of 128. And 0 to 2 pi. 1 minus cosine theta, d theta. All right, you know, maybe the hint's going to come in handy. Who knows? Let's take a look at it. What was the hint? Well, I guess this was the hint over here. All right, so let's write this down. So 2 sine squared x over 2 is the same thing as 1 minus cosine of x. All right, I got to write this down now. Oh, I think I see it. Root 128, 0 to 2 pi. And what do you get over there? You get the root d theta. And 1 minus cosine theta is actually just 2 sine squared x over 2. Again, I hope I'm not going so fast you can't follow. By the way, if at any point you get confused, walk away. All right? So what do you get over here? Now you get 256. Right? And you get 0 to 2 pi. And the root of that, all right, it's going to be tough. That's going to be sine squared x over 2 d theta. I have to think. Now, someone says, why do you have to think? I got to remove the square root symbol. Otherwise, I'm not integrating it. And I want to, I want to really careful. I want to be careful about it. So what I want to do is I want to talk about, you know, what the sine function looks like. All right, I need to be really careful about this. All right, so sine function is going to look like this over here. And the beginning of it would be, let's see, x over 2 would be 0. So it begins at 0, and x over 2 would be 2 pi, right? So it ends at 4 pi. Would that be agreed? So what's over here? 2 pi. I hope you can agree with that. So what do I know about this guy? It really, it turned out to be pretty nice. It's always going to be a positive thing. So I can write this down now. So root 256, 0 to 2 pi. And the square root of that is going to be really simple now. Just simply sine x over 2. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to put x there. It's theta over 2. And I have to apologize for that. I just, I guess I was daydreaming or something. It's easy to say I was daydreaming. I wasn't daydreaming. I just wasn't thinking. It's probably worse than daydreaming. Again, if I were typing this up, I'd be very careful to go back over with my notes to make sure I didn't do anything crazy. All right, let's keep doing it. And what do you get over here? Root 256. Oh, geez, the antiderivative of sine would be minus cosine, right? That would be theta over 2. And then I have to multiply by 2, right? 
because the derivative of, of cosine would be minus sine, uh, I'm sorry, it would be minus sine, so minus minus sine, sine theta over two and time. Yeah, that's pretty good. Limits integration zero to two pi. I hope I didn't make any mistakes. Let's see. I have to plug in two pi, right? So two pi over two is pi and the cosine of pi is minus one. Minus, I got to plug in zero now, right? And so if you plug in zero, the cosine of zero over two is cosine of zero, you're minus one. Let's plug that in. That's going to give you four root 256. I hate to do this to you, but 256 is 64 times four, right? Which is eight times two, which is 16. So it's four times 16, two times a 16, right? 64. All right, again, mistakes happen. And you know, I'm not beyond mistake. You're not beyond mistake. Everyone can make mistakes. 64, I feel pretty good about that. Let's keep going. You know, determine, I gotta look at this, determine the speed in meters per second of a particle trajectory. All right, so let's take a look at this. Let's see, S prime, let's write this down. The speed, determine the speed in meters per second of a particle or trajectory. Let's write this down. So I'm gonna say X is a function of t, it's five sine six t, and y is nine cosine six t. Well, let's write this down. dx dt is gonna be 30, cosine 6t dy dt is going to be minus 54 sine that's a sine 6t okay determine the speed in meters per second and at oh this is not so bad so dx I'm sorry, dy dx at t equals pi over four, or dy dx, uh, let's see, minus 54 sine 6t over 30 cosine 6t. This is minus 54, sorry about that, at pi over four. Oh boy, I gotta do some more thick here, right? Okay, minus 54. That's six times pi over four, right? So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's gonna be 270 degrees and the sine of 270 is minus one. And then 30. Cosine, it did say six, right? Two, four, six. I'm a little confused by the problem. Let me take a look at this over here. Oh, they're talking about speed. Ay, ay, ay. Let me erase this over here. Sorry about that. I was off on a tangent over here. And sorry about that. I was doing something completely different, not even thinking about the question. All right, so let, let me quickly go through it because we're, we're kind of getting the edge over here. Okay, X, whoops, X, Y, and differentiate them. What do you get? You know, 30. I think I did that before. Minus 54 did that. DS dt. We're basically taking the derivative of the integral, right, of the arc length 
that's all we're doing. And I, I, I didn't think about that. It's ds dt, which is we know the integral of the arc length looks like this over here. All right, I'm sure you remember me doing this. And we're taking derivatives. This is, you know, the arc length st, and we're taking its derivative fundamental theorem. So we got this over here. And then just plug it in. All right. And again, you get 54. I got before, but I was doing something different before I was doing dx dt. I'm sorry about that. It's 54. That's the speed of it. All right. So that was pretty simple. Determine the speed. Really, same type of story over here. Let's write this down. And um, you know, ds dt square root of uh, let's see, you know, um, the, the root of this thing is going to be um, is going to be nine. The square of that is eighty one, and then the square of nine t minus three um, is going to be nine. And that's going to be eighty one. So ds dt is going to be there's two of those, so it's going to be nine because the square root of eighty one is nine root two. All right, so nine root two. That's not so bad. All right, compute the surface area. Okay, a little more difficult. Um, one is, you, you can draw a picture if you want, but uh, yeah, maybe I should draw a little picture of this thing over here, uh, rolling the cone. I gotta read the next page, by the way, where they're going between zero and six, all right? So let me just make sure I understand that. The T is going between zero and six. Make sure I did that. Yep, okay. So, you know, looking at the picture, I guess I could do that as a line, but let, let's just do this. And we're rotating, I, I had to read that too, about the x-axis. It's being rotated like this over here. So what am I gonna do, put down? And again, you can draw a picture, but I'm not opposed to it, but I can put my integration down and zero to six dt, right, arc length. What's that gonna be? Well, the derivative of the first guy is gonna be six, that squared is 36. The derivative of the second guy is six, that squared is 36. And then two pi r. I wanna point out this is about the x-axis. So it's gonna be the y-coordinate. And what's the y-coordinate over here? The y-coordinate actually turns out to be six t. I gotta do the integrations. And it doesn't look that bad to me. And I gotta be careful though. Zero, six, T, DT. If I look at this, this is actually six root twos. I'll put this on the side for you. And then I get another six and I get a two pi. And what do you get there? Well, six times six is 36, 72 root two pi. And then I get an integrate. So it's 72 root two pi t squared over two, zero to six. Boy, it's gonna be 36 root two pi, and then I get 36 minus zero. What does that give me? 36 squared root two pi. Go to the next page. And um, they did the multiplication by the way. But uh, let me make sure I did do that too. 36 squared root two pi. So they did the 36 squared. Let me go through that with you. Make sure you know 36 squared is that number. Six times six is 36. Six times three is 18, 19, 20, 21. And let's see, three times six is 18. Uh, nine, 10, you get six, nine, two, one, one, two, nine, six. All right, I got that. All right. Compute the surface area, the surface generated by rolling the asteroid with parameterization. Well, I'm definitely in the first quadrant. And the cosine is going between, you know, uh, one and zero, zero and one. Yeah, it looks, looks pretty, it looks doable. But it, it might be tough though. I'm not saying it's gonna be easy. So zero, and that's gonna to be to pi over two. 2 pi 
And we're going to rotate this about the x-axis again, like this. It's, it's going to be the y-coordinate now, which is going to be sine cubed. Root dt. Oh, boy, it's going to be a tough one. Let me get my eraser out because i got to do some arithmetic here and algebra and calculus. So let's see. It's going to be x prime is going to be minus 3 cosine squared t sine t. And y prime is going to be 3 sine squared t cosine t. And I got to square those guys and add them together. So x prime squared plus y prime squared. Uh, it's, it's work. I'm going to do it though. Get my race rag, get rid of that baby arithmetic out the side over here. I don't need that anymore. And let's take a look at this. So it's going to be, let's see, nine cosine fourth power t sine squared t plus nine sine fourth power t times cosine squared t. I get to factor that, right? Nine cosine squared t sine squared t times cosine squared t plus sine squared t. Isn't that convenient? So I'm left off with nine cosine squared t sine squared t. And I, I gotta be honest with you, again, the, the, the limits of integration are nice because the absolute values of these things is irrelevant in these problems over here. Let's write this down. What do you get? Zero, pi over two, two pi, sine cubed t, and then you're going to get three cosine t sine t dt. Yeah, it looks nightmarish, but it can't be. So it's going to be six pi, zero to pi over two. I did that. And you can get sine four. That's cosine t dt. All right, let's take a look at it. So I guess what I could do is, I don't know, maybe borrow. I'm going to borrow. Let's see what I'm going to borrow here. It's six pi. Let's see. Now I can do this. U is sine. And du is cosine t dt. Hope I didn't make too many mistakes though. Sine is zero, zero. The sine of pi over two is one. This will be u4. And cosine t dt is du. And this is going to be six pi u5 over five, zero to one. And this would turn out to be six pi over five. All right, sure I didn't make any errors. Bingo, we did the whole assignment set. So I know this is tough, all right? And certainly no one enjoys doing the work. I, I give you honest with you, the homework for me is a lot easier if I didn't have to hand it in. So I was gonna, historically, what happened was doing homework, which I always preferred when the teacher didn't want the homework handed in, that this, my homework would look like this over here. That's what it looked like. Right. I, again, if I had an answer key, that would be great. It was rare to have an answer key, but I'd look at the answer. Typically, I want to point out when I was, um, you know, taking classes like this, the answer key would only have this in it. And that's if there was an answer key. It would just have the number. No work whatsoever. Just give you a number at the end. And you felt good if you got the number. But I want to point out, as, as, as time goes on, you know, this chicken scratch just doesn't cut it. Like on exams, it would cut it. Because we realize your exam, your time pressure, you're writing stuff down, may not look great. You're doing the best possible you can, but a grader could look at your work over here and says, oh yeah, they know what they're doing, all right?
But your goal in life is not to just take an exam. Your goal is to present. So this is why I want to get this across to you. Your work really should be typed up at some point. All right, should be presented in a typeset way. All right. Thank you for paying attention and good luck to you.